Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome into this episode of Hotty Toddy Talk. He's Nick. I'm Austin. As we are back with you for yet another preview of the weekend, this time it is for the 24th ranked Kentucky Wildcats coming to town. Ole Miss has put the weekend that was in Knoxville behind them. They have covered coming off of a week, a midweek win over Austin P. 13 to 9. Got a little hairy in the ninth inning, but yep. Ole Miss held on to win. That is not a slouch victory. Uh, Austin P with two wins over Mississippi State already this year. They also got a win over Auburn this year. So they are a team that can swing it, as they proved. Um, they hit a lot of home runs and they they get on base a lot and uh definitely gave Ole Miss more than what Ole Miss wanted. But a win's a win, uh, and Ole Miss back on track with Kentucky coming up this weekend. Now, of course, Nick, the big thing about this weekend that we kind of talked about in our recap show uh, uh, with Tennessee is the pitching change. We actually almost nailed it in our pre in right. our recap show with who they might, what they might do. Um, and of course, Mike made it official on Monday. Riley Maddox going to get the start Friday. Gunnar Dennis getting bumped to Sunday with Doyle in between. So no Grayson Sanye this weekend. Trying to do what he can to shake things up after a pretty uh, pretty bad weekend in Knoxville. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, I, I think you know Mike mentioned it after the game. It kind of had kind of really more than anything other than, you know, kind of getting beat up a little bit, was a timing thing, um, you know, with Maddox not having pitched in a while. And if if you lay him off to Sunday, you know, it, it makes it almost, I think, since Southern Miss since he pitched. So almost, I mean, Sunday, that would have been almost two weeks. And then you talk about, you know, we had talked about, you know, whether or not you move Dennis, or not Dennis, um, Doyle. You, if you move him to Friday, he loses another day. And then, Another good point Mike made after the game is the next series after Kentucky is a Thursday series, so he's going Thursday then. So really just kind of both a timing and a little bit of both getting beat up. But um, I'm excited to see Riley Maddox get his chance Friday night, that's for sure. Yeah, it will be his first outing uh, against SEC bats um, in a long time. Uh, you, right. you, got the, you had the injury last year, of course, um, that, that kind of kept him out of the equation, and, and he has not faced uh, any conference bats so far this year, but he has been improving his ERA, of course, down to 4.56 uh, in 25 and two thirds, 27 hits, 17 runs. Uh, he's struck out 21, however, and only walked seven. So the numbers are improving for Maddox. Right. But again, uh, that's against midweek competition. Now, Southern Miss is no slouch. Um, so, and of course, and Memphis has, has some bats on their team as well. So uh, it's good to see him getting his chance. Uh, now, of course, my opinion on it would have been you let him get some relief outings first, but with as bad as things were in Knoxville, I can't blame Mike, I guess, for going ahead and just making the move. I mean, it, it can't get much worse than it was up in Knoxville on the mound. Uh, so good to see, good to see Riley getting that chance. It, uh, and this is going to be an offense that's going to that's going to give him some fits. It's going to be hard. They're going to make him work. Um, so it will be uh, a good a good chance to see what Riley Maddox really has coming off the injury. And then, of course, you have Liam Doyle on Saturday. We all know about Liam Doyle. Right. Uh, back-to-back 10 strikeout games. The guy's a stud. He's certainly the face of the of the starters. Uh, and then Gunnar Dennis, an interesting move by Mike. I didn't necessarily see him removing Sonye altogether. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious what went into that all as a whole. But, I mean, Dennis and Sonye have both really struggled their last couple of innings. Sonye more than Dennis, I guess. So I guess that's kind of why right, yeah. he made that move. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. You know, I thought if anybody I thought that was going to get bumped, you know, I thought it would have been Dennis getting bumped before um, Sonye. So it, it'll be interesting to see what kind of role Sonye takes on going forward. I'm sure, you know, he, he's got to be available in some capacity, you know, because maybe we figure out he's not a true starter and he comes out of the bullpen and, you know, finds something. So that'll be interesting to see, you know, how, how that goes forward and, um, yeah, and, and you mentioned, you know, another good offense coming up this weekend. You know, not quite as good as Tennessee, but still another SEC offense that um, is going to come to play. Yeah, and, and if you look at the numbers on on Dennis and Sonia, Dennis right now sitting at a 7.24 uh, ERA after he got blasted by Tennessee, yeah. 27 and a third, 33 hits, 25 runs. He has struck out 34 and walked 13, where uh, he's given up five homers. Uh, Sonia with a 6.2 ERA. In 24 and two-thirds, he's given up 27 hits, 19 runs, 20 strikeouts, 10 walks, and four homers. So, I mean, all together, they're pretty even. Uh, you know, right. obviously, Dennis's ERA is higher, but that's also because it was already higher 
uh, coming into the weekend against Knoxville just because he, you know, he didn't have it. He wasn't super good in his first – getting the kind of the feel for it um, in his first couple outings. Then he kind of came into his own. And then Tennessee was a real wake-up call. And the same thing with Sanye. Uh, both of them got roughed up badly uh, up in yeah. – on Rocky Top. So uh, it will be interesting to see how Dennis uh, approaches the Sunday role. And what I'm hoping is that he'll come into the Sunday with a chance at a sweep. I mean, that's obviously what you'd like to see uh, is Ole Miss win Friday and Saturday. But now you have two question marks. You have what are you going to get from Maddox on Friday against SEC bats? And then what are you going to get from Dennis switching from a Friday role to a Sunday role? Yeah, and, and 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 that always comes with the pitching, you know, rotation shakeup. You know, there's question marks because obviously anyone – and it's different if it's someone that's done it before. But, you know, Riley Max has never started um, outside of the midweeks in his career. So, you know, his first week can start as a rebel. And then, yeah, just, you know, as far as you know, because Dennis got in a groove of pitching every Friday night. So now he's pitching on Sundays, and I'm sure, you know, that kind of messes up his schedule. Um, you know, throughout the week leading up to the weekend. So, yeah, de- definitely interested to see. Just glad that um, we're back at home. Um, I think that has a lot, you know, we played definitely played better at home. So excited to see that. Yeah, and it will be interesting to see how Grayson Sanye handles this and kind of what right. role he takes. Obviously, he's young. He's a sophomore. Um, obviously, the the hashtag Sonday, you know, was kind of trending there for a couple yeah. of weeks. and. Um, you know, I, I think Grayson is going to be a good teammate about it. I think he's going to, I think he's going to yeah. handle it, handle it well. Um, he seems to have a good support system around him. It's going to be a matter of, okay, how does he handle it? If, okay, if things go well this weekend, uh, and then Mike decides to keep that rotation, you know, for, for a week or two. Okay. Now Grayson's not, maybe Grayson's a midweek starter, you know, right. uh, you know, so you, you throw, you throw that out there. Cause I mean, obviously he didn't get to start obviously this, this past midweek, but, um, you know, it, it, you never know what you might see. Maybe he comes out of the bullpen. And mm-hmm. for a for a starter a who's been a starter to switch from being a starter to possibly a bullpen guy, that's a big deal. Like, I don't think oh, yeah. people realize that's a real big hit on your moxie. Um, and, and it's also just a weird uh, dynamic because you, you're coming out of the bullpen puts you in situations you're not used to as a starter. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's a totally different different mentality. You know, starting a game, you know, the top of the first, bottom of the first, whenever it may be, you come up first batter. There's no one on base, no outs, no runs, whatever it may be. So, and then you can come out the bullpen and you can have bases loaded, two outs in the game winning run on third base. So it, it's definitely a different mentality. You know, you have to have a, a and you see the good relievers that they, they got an edge to them. You know, these guys that are coming out, you know, just most of them throwing heat and just attacking guys. So it's definitely, like you said, definitely a whole whole different ball game versus starting and relieving for sure. Yeah, and, and I and I don't see. And again, we I haven't heard confirmation, you know, from Mike that he's going to put Grayson in the bullpen. I mean, we we don't know that, but I mean, obviously, you can't just let him sit and sit and sit and never pitch. Right. Um, so you're going to have to do something with him. So the natural assumption is he's he's either going to get a midweek start. Uh, or he's going to get a bullpen start. Now, of course, he has not started a game since Sunday in Knoxville. You get all the way through this weekend. If you haven't used him, if you don't use him this weekend, well, that's going to be a long layoff for a guy who's been starting. So you're going to have to find a way to use him and keep his keep his arm going. I, I would certainly see him in more of a early reliever role. Uh, I, I definitely don't think you put him out there in a clutch situation. Um, and, and I definitely don't think you put him out there in a closer situation where you've got a mallet or a spencer. That's their, that's their role. Uh, and as you mentioned, they've got that edge to them. Uh, that's their spot. I mean, obviously, Mallets has struggled a couple times, uh, but I mean, he's coming off an injury too. So, I mean, you, you got to take yeah. that into consideration. But he's got Josh Mallets, his whole attitude and demeanor uh, is completely different from Grayson Sanjay. I mean, they're just two different kinds of people. So, um, same with Connor Spencer. So, I mean, that's just, that's, the, you, you have certain guys, Brandon Johnson, you, you have guys like that that thrive in that role. Uh, and I and I think Grayson's more fit for maybe an earlier spot. So we'll see what Mike decides to do. Uh, but I certainly don't expect to see Grayson in, in any kind of late game situation, unless it's a blowout or something like that. Um, right. then you might. Um, and I, and I wouldn't be surprised if he starts uh, a midweek game. Uh, but you, I, again, no no confirmation of that. Um, you, you, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, Ole Miss's next midweek opponent. Uh, I'm blanking on who it is. All of a sudden, I think it actually might be uh, Memphis. I think it's Memphis uh, in Memphis this time. So. Um, so yeah, I believe they I believe they play Memphis on Tuesday night, yeah, if I'm not mistaken. 
um, uh, up in Memphis at FedEx Park. So uh, we'll see what happens with, with that one uh, and who Mike decides to go with there and if he uses him this weekend. Uh, the, the offense for Kentucky coming into this weekend uh, is very similar to Ole Miss. Uh, right. If you look at it, they both, uh, they're both they hitting 280. Uh, Ole Miss is hitting 284 after scoring 13 runs on uh, on Austin P and and uh, Kentucky has only hit 22 home runs on the year uh, compared to Ole Miss. That's actually low. Ole Miss has smacked 42. So 20 more home runs for the Rebels and the Wildcats. But Kentucky j- swept Georgia. Uh, and of course, Ooh. Georgia, a very good team. They have Charlie, Charlie Condon, who's just phenomenal uh, right. on their team. They swept Georgia and put up a lot of runs doing it and then managed to lose a game to Missouri somehow. So it's, that just tells you what can happen on any given day in the SEC. Uh, but the Wildcats are led by Nick Lopez, an average 395. Uh, he has two homers with 20 RBIs. Home runs wise, they're led by Ryan Nicholson. He's got four. He bats 275. But the, the the numbers that jumped out to both of us, Nick, and you mentioned it before we came on air. Uh, Emilian Petra, I believe it's Petre. I could be wrong uh, on that pronunciation. I apologize if I'm wrong on that. Uh, and Devin Burks, both of them combined 22 for 35. Uh, on stolen yeah. bases. Petre 12 of 15 and uh, Burks 10 of 10. So just an unbelievable amount of stolen bases between the two of those guys. And overall, the Wildcats are 58 for 65. This team runs and they run a lot. Yeah, um, you hit the nail right on the head, you know, and and they're, they're while they're still good offense, it's kind of like the Tennessee thing. You know, they hit a, a lot of home runs because of the ballpark they play in. And that's, you know, still credit goes to them because you still got hit the ball real far to uh, to go over the fence. But kind of that ballpark that Kentucky plays in is a smaller park. So their game is kind of tailored to, you know, the ballpark they play in. You know, they don't hit a lot of extra base hits. They they get on base. And like you said, they put their runners in motion. I haven't yeah. looked, but I'm sure I'm sure 58 runs is up near the tops for the uh, for as far as the team goes in the country. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot for our catchers. You know, that's one thing, you know, that we have talked about previously, you know, kind of not having our way with, you know, some potential and would-be base stealers, you know, uh, just kind of, you know, with new catchers in the SEC. And um, so, yeah, it's it, they're, they're a team that's going to put pressure on you when they get on base for sure. Yeah, and I'm actually trying to find that now because that's that's a uh, I, I I agree with tend to agree with you that that would be near the near the top of the of the conference stolen and they are they are number one uh, in in stolen base at 58 yeah. Vanderbilt uh, next up at 55 then Auburn at 51 then there's a drop off Ole Miss is actually fourth but they have 37 so quite yeah. a, quite a significant drop off uh, in in the stolen base category uh, with South Carolina 36 Mississippi State 31. Uh, and then it drops off into the 20s after that. So, yeah, the Wildcats lead the conference with 58 stolen bases. Um, they're going to run a lot, uh, and, and they're going and they take advantage of it quite frequently. I mean, they, that stolen base percentage uh, is, is, I mean, 58 to 65. That's 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 pretty much. And they only allow they've only allowed 15. Uh, right. So yeah. And, and so and again, and Ole Miss has not thrown all out of bat. They haven't thrown batters out. This is not what we're used to with Hayden Dunhurst and Calvin Harris behind the plate. Uh, we've got a couple of young catchers who are not as accurate yet and don't really have the cannons behind the plate. So you have to imagine that this Wildcats team is going to take advantage of that. Yeah, for sure. And and like, like I said, it, it's more or less them, especially with the younger catchers, you know, they're going to put pressure on because that not only puts pressure on the catcher, but the pitcher as a whole. And, you know, that can mess up, you know, their, their timing between the two of them, you know, getting signals and all that. So, it's definitely something to look out for this weekend. And, you know, it It was something that Mike mentioned, you know, kind of that went into the decision-making of uh, throwing Ma- Maddox on Friday. You know, he feels like he gives Ole Miss their best shot at controlling the run game. So that that was another thing that I thought kind of stood out and also that caught Coach Bianco's eye as well. Yeah, and, and Maddox does have a good pickoff move. Uh, so, mm-hmm. so, you know, and then you have, of course – uh, Doyle and and uh, who's a strikeout pitcher, and then mm. Dennis being a lefty, so he's kind of got his eye on 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 first base. So you you right. kind of you kind of use that to your advantage strategy wise. You know, for comparison, Ethan Groff is ten for ten uh, for Ole Miss. He leads the Rebels. Luke Hill starting to get up there nine for ten. After that, there's a pretty significant drop off. Right. Uh, Hughes and Ross each with four stolen bases. So uh, the Rebels do not run as much, uh, n- nearly as much. They're thirty seven of forty one on stolen bases. So, uh, I mean, that's a, that's a 21 
base difference uh, in the right. amount of bases Kentucky's stolen. So, uh, again, it, it, different dynamics. It's what a, SEC baseball brings you. Um, mm-hmm. And this is a Kentucky team that take tries to take advantage, and that's and and you you know that's they swept Georgia uh, with being and they, that base running game is going to help you in games like that in, in series like that. Uh, so so definitely no slouch uh, as far as that. And of course the Rebels hitting 284 offensively as well. They're led of, still by Ethan Leger in average with 376, and now he's second on the team in homers with seven. Andrew Fisher up to 11 home runs on the year, 29 RBIs, had a couple of mammoth bombs in Knoxville. Yeah, uh, And I say mammoth, of course, uh, with, slightly relatively speaking, because that ballpark is a cracker, <laughs> cracker box. But 445 feet over the scoreboard, that'd be out in every park. So um, you, yeah. you, you can count that for what it's worth. Uh, right. I, the, one, the guy that – I'll tell you what, Trayson Hughes, though. This is a mm-hmm. kid that I'm really keeping my eye on. His average now after the Austin P game up to 293. Uh, and remember, you remember – through non-conference play, this kid was sub 100. He was batting like yeah. 087 at one time. Right. Uh, could not find a hit. Uh, so for him to be pushing 300 now, and then Luke Hill up to 253 as well. So both these guys starting to really find it. But Trayson Hughes, not only is he finding his bat, but he's finding it in clutch moments. And right. having that extra piece to get past that top group of Groff, Fisher, uh, and Ross – the mm-hmm. Rebels really needed that, and and Hughes is really coming on, and that's going to be a big factor this weekend. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think as we spoke uh, spoke earlier in the season, you know, if if Ole Miss is if this thing is going to you know make this team is going to make a postseason run, it's gotta it's gotta be with Hughes and Luke Hill, you know, being the players that 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 we thought they would be coming into the season. So good to see. I think both of them uh, multi hit games uh, Tuesday night. So that was good to see from them. We saw. I'm not sure if Luke Hill will stay in the leadoff spot. He might. He's having a lot bad, better at bats. So um, that's another thing to watch for you. And I think if you can move him up to the top of the lineup, I feel like it kind of length, length, lengthens out the lineup down the bottom. So that, that'll that be, like you said, something interesting to watch this weekend as well. Yeah, and the other thing is Ole Miss has to clean up defensively. Uh, we, we've really seen some struggles on some hard-hit balls, you know, and I get some of these balls are hit hard, but for SEC players, it's fairly routine uh, on some of these bouncing balls, and and you've got to field them better. I mean, Ole Miss uh, in, in the SEC, uh, Ole Miss is second in the conference in errors with 25. That's not where you want to be. I mean, Alabama's with 26 to lead the conference. Uh, Kentucky is tied for seventh with 21. Um, so uh, this – you you got to clean up defensively. I mean, you're this big. That's a big reason they couldn't get out of some of those innings in Knoxville as well. Uh, was because they weren't making good fielding plays. We've really seen some struggles on some of these hard hit balls, and we even saw it against Austin P uh, last night yeah. or Tuesday night um, with with one that a double play that could potentially end the ninth inning that just kind of right. went. You know, Miss Burford just misplayed it, didn't get it in his glove, and uh, you know you just got you can't have mistakes like that against good SEC teams. I mean, this Kentucky team is twenty-one and four. They're five and one in the conference. Uh, right. They win a lot of ball games, and and they're they're going to be pushing for the SEC. I mean, they're leading the SEC East right now. So um, this is a team that's trying to really revamp. Uh, so defensively, I would certainly like to see the Rebels clean that up a little bit. Yeah, that's a really good point, and you know, especially this weekend against a team that's going to play some small ball. That defense is going to have to be on point because you know, field and bunts, and you know, whatever it may be, pickoff plays or whatever they got going over there it, it, it's going to have to be on point because like, like we said have said it all year you know when you're playing in the SEC those small mistakes can get amplified and a, a throw that goes over the first baseman head and gets in the stands and runners advance it could score runs and so so and, and we've seen it this year happen so it's definitely something that has to be ironed out I think the defense obviously is um you know mistakes are going to happen we're human that thing happens but it's I'm. Um, it's got to be physical mistakes and not mental mistakes for me. Yeah, one hundred percent. And uh, and of course, and then of course, obviously, the game begins and ends on the mound. Um, right. With Kentucky, they haven't officially announced their starters, but you know their weekend rotation has been pretty set. I would imagine we're going to see uh, Mason Moore, Drew Lafferty, and Dominic Neiman. Uh, no particular order. I don't know which order they'll put them in. Uh, but those have been their their starters uh, on the year. Moore uh, with 3.03 ERA in 32 and two thirds. Lafferty 3.06 and 17 and two thirds. And Neiman with a 3.31 ERA 
in 32 and two thirds. Uh, Moore kind of leads that rotation, 23 hits, 12 runs. He has struck out 33, only walked 12. Neiman struck out 31, only walked 10. Lafferty, 14 and six. Um, you've also got uh, Travis Smith has started five games. He struck out 20, walked 16. He's not really been a part of their weekend rotation, but uh, but he's going to be a possibility there. Uh, and then you'll probably see, you'll probably end up seeing a guy like Trey Poozer at some point. He's got 19 and a third innings picks uh, with, with seven appearances, 22 strikeouts, seven walks. And then Evan Byers has 10 appearances as well on the year, 14 and four. So they've got a pretty decent bullpen. Their overall ERA, 3.66. Uh, again, it's going to be a matter of can Ole Miss take advantage of runners on base? I mean, that's where you've got to come through against a team like Kentucky. Um, and their pitching staff is going to be hard pressed to allow that. Yeah, and it's just, you know, we, we saw it Saturday, you know, and we've seen them do it before, you know. It's just part of getting that big hit. We know they can do it. It's just, you know, being able to kind of clutch up and, and get that big hit when your team needs it most. And, you know, we've kind of seen them uh, last weekend struggle with runners on <clears throat> struggle with runners on base. So that, that'll be another thing for me that's kind of the – one of the keys this weekend is when, when you get runners on base and get your, uh, against a pitching staff like this, you, you got to be able to come through. Yeah. Uh, you, you absolutely have to. And, and, and Ole Miss has, you know, they've, they've done a decent job of late. Uh, but, but then again, you've still got games at uh, big games where you've, you've struggled particularly up in Knoxville. I mean, that's the one you can keep looking back on uh, where, where Ole Miss just did not really put any of the pieces together except on Saturday. Um, and, and it's just one of those things where, okay, you shake that one off. The season's not over. The sky's not falling. You know, your season isn't necessarily defined by that series loss in Knoxville, but you can't let that carry over this weekend at home uh, against Kentucky. This is a, this is a yeah. series that is, that is very winnable uh, if, you, if you're Ole Miss and you've got to take advantage of it. I mean, you, because as we know, I mean, the schedule does not get any easier. After Kentucky – you have yeah. Memphis in the midweek up in Memphis. And then guess where you go after that? You go on the road to Fayetteville to take on number one Arkansas, who has possibly the best pitching staff in the country, uh, at least one of the top two. I mean, Texas A&M up there too. But, I mean, Hagan Smith, holy cow. Uh, we'll yeah. talk about him, of course, next week. But just an absurd pitcher. I mean, it's yeah. ridiculous um, how good he is. You talk about God-given talent. That kid has it. Um, oh, yeah. And a, course, lo uh, a local product from my neck of the woods, still still part of their team over there, uh, the Lewisburg product uh, for Arkansas. We're going to talk all about them uh, right. know, later on. But just the, the, what, the all that to say, uh, the schedule does not get any easier if you're Ole Miss. You go to number one Arkansas, and then you got Mississippi State at home after that. Then you go to Athens to play Georgia. I mean, the list goes on and on. Brutal, right. brutal, brutal schedule. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, coming up uh, here before long, uh, Texas and Oklahoma are going to be on those schedules. Yep. So you're going to just just add some more fun to, to the SEC schedule. Two more so, good ball teams, yep. Yeah. So the SEC is a brutal grind. We, we know yep. this. Uh, Kentucky ranked number 24 for a reason. Uh, they are 5-1 and one in the conference. They're only lost kind of a shocker to Missouri. But, uh, you know, you're going to lose games like that every now and then. But they score a lot of runs. I mean, this is, I mean, this is a team – that is that is going to give Ole Miss all they can handle. I mean, in the, in the sweep against Georgia, uh, Kentucky scored 16, 9, and 12 in those three games against against the Wild yeah. or the, the Bulldogs, rather. And then they scored 9 and 7 in their two wins against Missouri. It was kind of a 2-1 to one, kind of a pitcher's duel in, the, in that one they lost. So this is a team that's going to score a lot of runs, and you got to be ready as a pitching staff. And, and the Ole Miss pitching staff, again, is going to be the make or break for this weekend. Yeah, I totally agree, and 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 we we know the bullpen has been good up to this point. They've just got to hold on and you know keep being that rock solid uh, bullpen that you can go to after whether these starters, you know, you know, if I had to pick, you know, the starter cruises through seven and you th throw out uh, two more guys and you 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 get an easy win, but unfortunately that's not the league we play in. So you know, guys are gonna starters are gonna get roughed up. Bullpen guys are gonna get roughed up. It's just going to be the uh, team that gets the big hit and gets the big pitch at the end of the day that ends up winning. So that's yeah. that's what we uh, ho hope for this weekend for sure. Well, Friday's game will be at 6.30 p.m. on the SEC Network. Plus, both Saturday and Sunday will go at 1.30 
also on the SEC Network Plus for both of those. Uh, so you can catch all the action there. And of course, stay tuned to the Rebel Walk for all of your updates. Uh, we'll have all of that for you as always. He is at Nick Filipich 11. I am at Austin on Air 1021. Be sure and keep up with us for all of your baseball updates uh, right here on the Rebel Walk. And of course, Ole Miss and Kentucky. Ole Miss looking to bounce back. Kentucky looking to keep their dominance in the SEC East going. Ole Miss looking to play party pooper to the Wildcats. That's Friday night, 6.30, uh, is first pitch against the 24th-ranked Wildcats. We will talk to you guys again on Monday, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, have a great evening or morning, whenever you may be watching this, and we'll talk to you again next time right here on Hotty Toddy Talk. Have a great night, everybody. 